community folks are being pushed out of a neighborhood they call home. What is your view on the changes of the West Village? And what will you do to make sure that the impact of these changes have a positive effect on LGBTQ youth, West Village residents, and business owners? Another great question. I will, be, I will continue to be a fearless and fierce advocate for our community and stand up against real estate interests. You know, I often say that real estate, thank you, I often say that real estate is to New York like oil is to Texas, and we need somebody who's willing to stand up to those special interests, to stand up those powerful interests, and make sure that our voices are heard. I'm a small business owner, so I understand on a first-hand basis what it means to run a business day in and day out, every single day for 20 years. Uh, a good point, again, about St. Vincent's is when St. Vincent's uh, closed, we lost thousands of union jobs, but we also started seeing the small businesses closing one after another after another. I'm deeply committed to making sure that we regenerate small businesses. We need to think about small businesses as the commerce that drives New York City. Right now, this administration thinks of it and deals with small businesses almost in a punitive way. Uh, we need to invest in our small businesses, and we need to do things to protect them against predatory landlords and development, uh, developers who are opportunistic. In the, I believe it was the 70s, it may have been the 80s, uh, Ruth Messenger proposed a commercial rent control bill. Uh, it didn't make much headway, got a lot of pushback, but a couple of years ago, Robert Jackson uh, reinvented that and proposed some ideas about how to make sure that when uh, small businesses, my sister had a vintage clothing shop called Marmalade on, on Ludlow Street, and it was there for years and years and years, and after the community developed and a couple of nice uh, development luxury condos went up, suddenly when she went to renew her lease, it was 10 times what it was before. So that ended the, the life of Marmalade. Um, and uh, so I think we need to put some mechanisms in place and we can do this with legislation that requires landlords to act in good faith, to not overly inflate uh, the uh, commercial rents uh, for small businesses. I think we can find ways to encourage and incubate small businesses. There are other programs in other districts that invest in incubation programs for small businesses. Listen, we're the West Village Chelsea and Hell's Kitchen. We're some of the most dynamic, innovative, creative people in the world, and that's what's so special about New York City, and that's what drives the city forward. We need to make sure we have affordable housing to allow those people to come to the city to invest in their ideas, and we need to set them up for success in terms of small businesses so that it's not regressive and overbearing, but it actually fosters that type of small business that's so special and unique to New York City. Thank you. I completely agree that there is a crisis, not just in the West Village, but throughout the entire West Side of Manhattan, and maybe throughout the entire city when it comes to small businesses, mom and pop stores that have been around serving the community, whatever community it may be, for decades. Their lease comes up for renewal, their landlord doubles, triples, quadruples their rent, and they are gone. And what comes in their place? Either the store stays vacant for months and months and months, or a Dwayne Reed or a Bank of America ATM or a nail salon opens up and it doesn't serve the community in a real way. So I think we need to look at a few things. One is, as Yetta mentioned, I think Robert Jackson's bill is a very good bill. And it's a bill that hopefully if we can reform the way the city council works in empowering individual council members to be able to bring up legislation that they believe in through their committees, that we can actually pass a bill which would uh, help small businesses that are struggling under landlords uh, who are raising rents on leases astronomically. Number two is, I think that we need to take away the tax abatement for small businesses that are getting an abatement for sitting empty. I believe right now if you're a small business and you have an empty storefront, you still get a tax abatement. That shouldn't be the case. You shouldn't get a tax abatement from the city for doing that. What the city may want to explore is giving tax abatements to landlords if they agree to re-sign leases for small businesses if they only do it at an incremental rate. 
So they get a rebate on their property taxes in some way from the city so that the city can incentivize landlords to re-sign leases uh, with small businesses. And then lastly, I think an idea that has been experimented with on the Upper West Side, Community Board 7 and Councilmember Gail Brewer put through a rezoning up there which limited what could go in on retail spaces on Columbus and Amsterdam Avenue with the hope of not having more large banks and pharmacies and places like that. Uh, we have to check and see if it's been a success. I honestly don't know if it's been a success. I think it would be important to talk to the small business owners and the local elected officials up there. I've seen that in some places it hasn't worked up there, but it would be good to get an overall picture and see if that could be instituted uh, down here in this district uh, to actually help small businesses in a real way. The next and last moderated question will be for...